What I've learned teaching online for over a decade now is that no longer can it just be video. No longer can it just be slides. No longer can it just be audio. No longer can it just be text. You have to find a way to communicate and connect with them with the online teaching and virtual teaching world that encompasses all of those things. So that way you give the students the best opportunity to learn in the way that works best for them. And it breaks it up for you as well because you're not sitting there and it's just regurgitating text over and over again, or you're just filming a video, you know, like this. And it's just me talking at you. Even in this video, you can tell I already have different B-roll and overlays and some text and some other options and ideas to best further explain what I'm talking to you to keep your attention, but to also make it very engaging and interactive. And that is the way that the online teaching and virtual world has really gone now and we need to keep up with it. So let me show you an exact example of how I do this. Let's go right into Canva. Here is my account. Here is one of the templates that I use for my big signature program, which is for musical theater performers, how to cultivate a career in this industry, the business side of this. And all of these templates here, you can start out by just going into templates on the left-hand corner, okay? And then the easiest thing is to just click, you know, presentation or type in a keyword that works for you, education presentation, let's see what pops up, okay? And then you have access to all of these templates. Now, if you're using the free version of Canva, just double check to make sure that it is part of the free version. And there are great templates out there that are free that so don't sweat the small stuff if you don't have the money to invest in canva and pay for it i pay for it because it's a huge part of my business so then i get access to like the premium templates and it's worth it for me but if it's not worth it for you what you're going to do is just go through here and pick a template that feels like your topic your class your presentation if you're teaching younger folks then go in here and find a template that vibes with you the colors the design because we want to make this as easy as humanly possible for you. So it looks fancy, but it's not taking a lot of work, okay? So if you live in this world or you could do just a presentation and see what pops up. So let's pick one together here. If you hover over it as well, on the bottom left-hand corner, you see three out of 10, two out of 10. That tells you how many slides are already cultivated in that actual design. So pick a design that works best for you for whatever you know, you're creating and the topic that you're creating it for, okay? You can also go in here and type different keywords and see if it pulls something up better for you, but let's just pick one. So let's just say, let's go for this one because why not? Okay, we're gonna click on it. We can also scroll down to the bottom and we can see other options and see if any of these work. So see, if I hover over this, see how it says pro on the bottom right-hand corner? That means that it's going to have to be the paid version. I do have the paid version, so I could use it. But if you don't, then just avoid that. Then you can scroll down here and you can see what other styles are in the deck that we can choose from. This looks good. I like the colors. It works for what I'm gonna, my mock that I'm doing. Click choose template, the purple button on the right hand side. Okay, and then it's gonna draft this for us. All right, the first thing I would say is to go up in the top right hand corner and delete that and type in the title of your presentation. Okay, so whatever it may be, or if it's your class, right? Whatever the class title is, let's say if I teach like Theater 101, okay? Type in the title of the class. Okay, the next thing we're going to see down here are all the different slides at the bottom. See how I can scroll through them? We can change the order of these, we can update the text and the font, we can change the colors, we can do everything, but we're keeping it simple, okay? So the first thing we do is we'd have our first, you know, template design. Go here, double click, Okay, and we would rename this. So let's say this is Theater 101. Okay, notice how we may have to resize it. So we can click on it, it'll highlight it in a purple box. We'll drag the right hand corner over with the little dial here, and then we can make it fit in one. Okay, prepared by, you know, your name or whatever it is. Okay, and then let's say, what's the next slide that you want to be in this presentation, right? You probably already have your notes or maybe you're creating it at the same time here in. Okay, then you'd go in here and you would just replace, okay? Just replace what's already here. Make it easy for yourself, okay? Notice how they're giving you very little amounts of text. Remember, slides are just going to be used in addition to you riffing and talking on them. We don't want everything on the slide. And if you do, then 
go ahead and rework this a little bit. Okay, but we're gonna replace all of these. And let's say you don't want the second one to be that. Let's say you want the second one to be that template. Or maybe this template works better for you. Click on it, hover over it, click on it and drag it in the order that you want them to show up. Okay, so there's number one, then we'd go to number two, okay? And you'd rinse and repeat, okay? The, how, what order you want the templates in, that's the first thing that I do, okay? Kind of what looks good for me. And then I'm gonna start and I'm gonna put my, my presentation in note by note, step by step. What do I want slide two to be? Great, that works. What's slide three? Okay, well actually this is going to work for my slide three. So I'm gonna pull that and I'm gonna edit that to be slide three. And then I would just rinse and repeat and create all of these. If you wanna duplicate one slide because you like it, maybe you need this one twice in a row. Hover over it, you see the three little dots on the top right hand corner of that little slide. Okay, we would just click duplicate page. Many different ways to do this, easy to do it, okay? Duplicate page. And then we'd have two side by side, the same one. Cool? Okay. You can also slide on the bottom right hand corner. You can slide these bigger or smaller. We can see them in a different format. Also, by clicking the grid view over here, we can see the grid all together. Okay, bottom right hand corner. Or if we wanna scroll, this is how I do it. Click the scroll view, and we're gonna see them top to bottom. Okay, whatever works for you best. So go through here, I would update all of these as well. And then you can also put notes in, in the bottom left-hand corner, we can click presenter notes. And if you want those in here, you can do that as well. Okay, and then when you're ready to do this, we're gonna next then jump over into Loom and we can use these slides and film this. The best thing you can do with Loom is get the free version as an educator. All you have to do is go on Google Educator free account, apply for it, you have to use your email address, and if you get approved, you can use it for free. If you don't have the um, paid version, you can only do up to five minutes. So I would highly suggest getting approved for the educator version for free. And if you cannot get the free version, I'm telling you this program is absolutely going to be worth your money, okay? Maybe your school has it or your education or institution has an account as well, ask them, okay? See if there's the money for it. So here's an exact example of what one of my videos looks like for my students when I record it for them. You can see that it has closed captions at the bottom here, okay? You can see that I'm showing them my screen at the same time as I am filming it. So it's really easy to do. And then on the right-hand side, I can see how many times they viewed it. This one I downloaded. Okay, I can share it with them. So if you wanna download it and send it to them, I'll show you how to do that. Um, they also get to have other options like emojis and whatnot down here at the bottom, but it's really interactive. Let me show you how to do this because the best part about it is that it's one, two, three clicks. You're done, moving on. And that's what we want. We want, we want it to look nice, we want it to look bougie, but we want it to be simplistic, simplistic in nature. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click new video, record a new video, okay? Then your screen is going to open up and on the left hand side over here, you are going to have different options to see what is popping up, okay? A pen tool that you can write. You can also click over here, boom, boom, boom. You're also seeing me on the bottom screen down here because this is my camera. I use my camera from my phone, this right here. This is what I use my camera for. And I sh I'll show you how to do that in another video. I'll link it in the description box below. But this is from my computer. It auto populates it in here, okay? The other option I have is I can make myself bigger, okay? I can make myself smaller if I want to, or I can go full screen if I want to as well. You have those options down at the bottom. Okay, the next thing at the top right is I can go full screen. What, I, what do I want to record on my camera, on my computer? That's what we're looking for. So I want full screen. Do I want camera on or off? Do I want microphone on or off? And then I want to start recording. And then you have effects in here as well. Well, And if you want a full deep dive on this, I did a whole video on how I do um, all the back end stuff of Loom. I'll link it down in the description box below. But what I want to do is I want to go into my presentations, which is where we are right now, okay? I am going to click present in the top right-hand corner of the button, okay? So I want present and full screen, and then I'm going to click the purple button, present at the bottom. I am full screen now, okay? And then I want to go ahead and turn my camera on so you can see me, so I'm going to use just my FaceTime camera so it doesn't mess up this camera right here for this video. And look, you can see me at the bottom. 
for my computer camera, all right, I can move this around, I can make it bigger, okay? I can make it, let's make that look better. I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger, I can go full screen and you can see everything in here, which I do all the time, okay? And then I'm gonna go back small, okay? And then default microphone, okay, I would use, I have a fancy microphone, I use this, I have again, go watch the full video, but the point would be, we're gonna click start recording. Okay, then it's gonna count us down on the left-hand side of the screen, and we get to have a video presentation right there of the entire screen that I want. Okay, this is my presentation that I've already created. Okay, and you can see that I can click the right side and see how, if I hovered over it for a second, you see how these arrows came up? That's how you go to the next you know, slide. So right now I'm recording, okay? And I would start my video for my students, okay? I would talk about it and then I would go to the next slide when I'm ready. And if I wanted to make a point, I would just bump out for a second, give them a little bit of a break, talk for a hot second about something, riff on something, okay? Then I would go back, okay? Talk about this on my screen too. I can highlight it and they can see it. And then I would go on to the next slide. Okay, if I'm in the way, I can either really quickly, right when I'm presenting, no editing, I can go down to small, or I could even move myself over here if I wanted to. And I wanted to be like, hey, look down here. Don't forget, we have chart one, chart two, chart three, and chart four. Here's chart one, here's chart two, here's chart three, here's chart four, okay? And then I would just keep going. And notice how I'm going in and out because I can move myself around right during the filming of it, big or smaller, riff on the topic for a second, and then straight back into it, go back up, keep myself on the screen, okay? When I am done, I'm just gonna click stop recording and you may have to exit out of it for a second, okay? And then see on the right-hand side, I have my buttons here, okay? I can click pause if I wanted to, or I can restart, give them a little confetti if I wanted to, but I'm gonna click stop. Okay, after I click stop, it jumps back into my account and I have access to look at it. Here's what it looks like, okay? I can title this, right? I can see what it's going to look like. And then the top right-hand corner, I can click copy the link and I can just share this link with them or I can click share, okay? And I could embed it into something if I'm wanting to embed it. I have access to um, a GIF if I want or I can share it via email but I just do anyone can view and I share the copy of the link of that video. And then what happens is when I copy this video and I open it in a new window, then it's going to look like this for them, okay? And then they can click play and they have access to emojis. You, can, you have access to have them do other things um, I'm in the account again, but I can give them tasks to do. There's a transcript here. I can see the different views. And then I do have access to other settings in here. But the point is that you have these two options to quickly, even now you could see I could throw together a presentation super fast just by creating some quick slides, some visual elements and aid to help them see it, get the text in an interactive way, and then quickly go in and record, and then I can send that to them immediately. And I do this every single day. It's how I do quick feedbacks, it's how I do longer lessons as well. I don't do any editing. I might go in and in Loom, you can trim the beginning and the ending, okay? But other than that, I'll just hit pause if I need a second, because I you know, don't know where I'm going next, or I, the dog barked or whatever, or I just keep going as if nothing happened. And keep in mind, remember, you really want these lessons to be as short as humanly possible. Keep them concise, no filler, no fluff, nothing else extra that they would need to kind of like scrub through. Your next option too is that you can go into Canva and you could download the slides into a PDF or you could give them an active link in Canva to the slides where they can view it outside of the class or the lesson. So why does this work so well? And I've tested this out for the many different types of ways that I've delivered content. Number one, it's fast for me. It's easy for me. It makes me feel professional. And then on the other side of this for the students, it gives them a way to see you physically, 
to connect with you as if you were right there. And then it gives them a way to see slides and text and breaks it up for them. I spend way less time answering questions because if I have one student that asks a question and I know I'm gonna get the same one or I have received the same one, I just film one video and then we, they ask the question, I go, oh yeah, the video is in that module or here's the link to the video and I just send it to them and, and we move on with life. Have you tried using Canva or Loom for any of your lessons? I'd love to know in the comments below. And if this video is helpful, please give me a like, a thumbs up. I have new videos coming out on this channel to help you become a better, more confident, um, more productive, more happy human and artist and educator, whoever you are in this world of online and virtual teaching. So subscribe if that sounds good to you and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.